Go. Riley Loftus, welcome to the PopGo Project Podcast. How are you? I'm good, buddy. How are you? This is a year in the making, <laughs> right? And that's no joke. A Quite year. literally a year. Maybe it's just shy of a year. I feel like uh, you reached out to me after uh, I had Neil Nicastro on. And mm -hmm. That was like, I feel like around July. And we've been trying to do this ever since. I just stalk Neil and whatever he does, I try to do because I think he has created the best career as a self-employed musician. So I already, if you hear barking, I apologize. I've got pit bulls and all that stuff. Nice. But um, yeah, I mean, I already knew that your podcast was popping off and it was really a success. And um, I was interested like, like well before that. But once I saw Neil, I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Part of my stalking means I got to hit up Johnny Pop going now for the podcast. Well, here we are a year later. And it's funny because the first time you rescheduled, mm -hmm. the second I time, I think I just, you stood me up. <laughs> I, I've literally been stood up twice in my entire life by women. One was when I was like oh, 16 God, or 17. I'm not one of them. I hope. Once when I was 16 or 17 and you, when I was a 40 year old and a 41 year old, no, a 40 year old man. So that, Yeah. I, I do that sometimes. Two women on my list that have stood me up. You're one of them. Yeah. And you know what? My dad, he, he uh, once he found out that I stood up the podcast one time and it was honestly by accident. And then I think I ghosted you for a couple of weeks too. I was like afraid to even be like, I'm sorry, man. I, I totally got busy at work. I forgot. My dad was like, when he found out that I was on the podcast tonight, he's like, 8 30 remember yeah. it's on Pop Goes podcast. <laughs> like, no. Jim, she was actually, it was like 8 33. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's kind of funny timing how everything kind of uh, played out because had we done it a year ago, mm -hmm. um, where we are currently, you know, it would not even have played out like this because absolutely, uh, your dad is um, the CEO of Shamrock Communications, which mm -hmm. uh, they own uh, Rock 107, ESPN Radio, and QFM, mm -hmm. and then also the Billboard properties. Uh, and I didn't, I, I've always heard of of Jim Loftus, you know, because I spent seven years in at Shamrock Communications. I had left for three. And now, thanks to your father and uh, Dave Mehal and Terry Dietz, I'm back in the fold at uh, Shamrock, which I'm very happy about. But um, I've always heard of your dad's name. Mm -hmm. And I've always heard of your name, too, like throughout, you know, my time in the, in the scene. Mm -hmm. You know, Riley Loftus, Jim Loftus. I never put two and two together. Um, right there. Yeah. So, and then like, I guess I saw, I don't know when the news kind of broke. It was like later in 2023 and you had shared um, on your Facebook page that, you know, Jim Loftus was essentially coming home to Scranton. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, at that point I put two and two together, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, holy crap. Jim Loftus is Riley Loftus' father. And even at that time, I had no, uh, I was not even entertaining going back to Shamrock. That was late last year. And it wasn't until like February, March of this year that I uh, uh, came back to Shamrock. So it's kind of funny. Yeah, I got, I have big shoes to fill with him. Well, I kind of wish it, I kind of wish this had happened before because um, now I'm very nervous. <laughs> Because I know how you know he's gonna be watching this. <laughs> uh, yeah. So like the the one episode that someone watches will be this one. It'll be your father, who is my boss, and <laughs> hopefully he doesn't go. You know what? That guy sucks. Like I don't know why we hired him back. <laughs> no, you know my dad's a big Pop Go fan, and even before he knew that I knew you, um, you know my dad. I'm super close with my dad. My dad is has always been like my number one, him and my mom, but my dad has always been my number one go-to guy for advice, just to talk. He's like my therapist. Um, he's, I, I, I have the best dad and everybody that knows my dad, I've never heard one bad thing said about my father. Everybody that meets my, meets me that knows that he's my dad, you know, has wonderful things to say about him, but my dad talks a lot about the business and the station and when he was coming back to Rock 107, he kind of had some ideas about where he wanted to take the station and what he wanted to do with it. And your name came up all the time, like about, oh, I want to get this guy Paco back in here. He, you know, he was here for a little while and he's doing something else now, but, you know, he's so good at what he does. And he was just talking about, we got to get this Popco, Popco. And I said, Popco, I'm like, 
like Johnny Popko, like the, the Popko project, like that Johnny Popko. He's like, yeah, yeah, you know him? I'm like, uh, yeah, like everybody knows him. And my dad was like, yeah, I got to get him back. And then a few weeks later, he's like, we got him. And I was like, all right, nice. So he already knew you well before he made the connection between us and everything That's like funny. that. He's That's a big really fan. Funny. My dad, you know, your friends with him on Facebook, I think Betty McNulty, that's... <laughs> That's Jim yeah. on the cover. Yeah. And well, he's always seeing all the stuff you post. He thinks you do great stuff. So oh, that's great. Well, that means it means a lot to me. And and you know, he was obviously one of the reasons I went back. Um, you know, the reason I left initially uh was because just financial reasons. It was um, you know, COVID was not a, a, a friend to sure. many businesses, especially mm -hmm. those who are commissioned sales reps, you know. Absolutely. And uh, you know, three years went by and it feels like it was less than that. It feels like it was a day. Mm -hmm. And then when he came back and like you said, he kind of shared his vision of, uh, you know, where Shamrock was, you know, going to go and yeah. the the stations and kind of his vision. And again, like I said, I knew of his name. And like you said, also, like, there's never a bad thing. Mm -mm. He's like a legend in radio, right? Yeah, he is. He and is. Uh, so, yeah, he uh, I sat down with him, Terry and Dave, and uh, it was a great meeting. And like I said, I'm glad to be back. But yeah, he's a, he's a cool guy. You know, I grew up. We moved a little bit um, when I was younger. We moved, I'm born and raised here up until about fourth grade. And then we moved to Philadelphia when he went to go work for CBS radio. He was the vice president of sales for the Philadelphia market. Um, and, you know, my dad's just given me some of the coolest opportunities. Like I met Justin Bieber twice in one week nice. in Philadelphia and in New York and just concerts. And he took me to like, five Jonas Brothers concerts, Hillary Duff concerts. And as like a 10 year old kid, like those were like, you yeah. know, ultimate. and it was just me and my dad, you know, it was like me and him and he brought me everywhere and just hanging out at the stations. I remember after school, just going and sitting in one of the offices or sitting with the jocks and, you know, in the rooms. And it's just, he's just the coolest, coolest guy for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get to talk to him enough, but, uh, Go up I'm, and or go down and bother him. I should yeah, say. Yeah, I, I, uh, I look this forward to. Open. Yeah, I know it is, and I look, I look forward to to working with him. And so, I mean, how has his you know career and, and involvement in you know music <laughs> kind of shaped who you are as a you know Riley Loftus, um, NEPA, or a staple here, so to speak. A uh, very talented singer. Should I call you a songwriter too? And I know you have tons of stuff out there, but you have stuff out there, right? Yeah, I um I haven't done anything like that in a long time, and we can get into the yeah, reason we'll get into why. That. But yeah, yeah, I appreciate the the accolades though. So. Yeah, singer, songwriter, musician. Um, you can catch her out playing, uh, all over town. She, she's got a whole list of July dates on her Facebook page, so go check those out. But you're always booked every month. Um, but how I mean, growing up with your dad, you know, in the the music business, mm -hmm. I mean that that kind of shape, you know, kind of the road that you've gone down. Honestly, as surprising as this might sound, not at all. Okay. I don't think. Um, and this is really a funny story. Like, um, you know, when you're growing up and you you start to pick out like what you might want to do and what you like. Um, my dad was like, you can do anything. You're just not going into communications. That's it. You're not going into radio. It's too up and down. It's I don't think you have the skin for it. You're a crybaby. You know, I don't think you're tough enough for it. And it's a lot of, you know, ups and downs. It's unpredictable. So do whatever you want to do. Just, I'm just, you're just not doing that. And my mom, you know, it was in radio too. Mm -hmm. Morning show, you know, my mom was, was Mark and Renee in the morning. You know, my mom was, you know, just like in the same field as well. Um, so that was just kind of my, my thing. As far as like skills and like genetics, my dad was always in the plays growing up. He was, he always was singing and my mom grew up playing piano. So I think I got that little gift of an ear maybe for music from them. But as far as like pursuing it and the business side of doing this, I really kind of did this on my own. They've always been supportive of what I've wanted to do. And I have like a regular job too, like a day job that nobody knows about. <laughs> that's just like in mental health and very like cut and dry and uh, very actually very serious job. But sure. I kind of keep that very separate from my live music business. So a lot of people don't even know that I don't do this full time because I am playing out so much. But <clears throat> as far as like that whole piece, 
they kind of just let me go on my own and they just supported, but never pushed. And, um, I mean, they're at almost all my gigs, so they're my number one fans, but as far as getting me into it and just how I've done it, they've really taken a backseat and just supported and just let me figure it out on my own, which I appreciate because it's, it's been, I've been around for a minute. I don't know if a lot of people realize that, but I've been doing, I'm 28 now and I've been playing in bars. My first gig in a bar was, I was 14. Wow. So I've been doing this for quite a while with some breaks here and there. COVID didn't help as well with the bar scene. Um, but the last couple of years, I've really made it enough where it could be a full-time job. I'm just psychotic and you're hustling. Yeah. <laughs> too busy. <laughs> That's why you fell asleep that one night. Yeah. And honest to God, that really was in. I felt like a piece of shit afterwards too. But <laughs> It's all good. So, I mean, what's uh, obviously your dad, you know, your family in music mm -hmm. business, but what, what made you decide to pick up the guitar? Like what, like, you know, or piano, I don't know if you know if you are multifaceted in yeah. instruments so, or what. My parents, I'm an only child, just me, Jim and Renee. That's it. My parents. <laughs> and, um, you know, as a kid, I was never like a sports kid. You know what I mean? I was never the kid playing soccer or softball or basketball. I had no interest whatsoever. Um, so my mom was like, well, you got to do something. So at four years old, she put me in piano lessons. So I started with piano. And like the lady that I had was super weird. And I like hated going. It was like in the basement of her house. And she had like this weird boyfriend that would always like come in the room and like he was weird and she was weird. And my mom was like, this is weird. So we ended up leaving that. And she was like, well, you got to do something like, you know, figure it out. So I was like, all right, I'll take piano lessons. We went to Magden Music and I was taking piano lessons there instead. And then I have this very vivid memory of me and my dad watching School of Rock the movie with Jack Black. Yeah. And I was fascinated with the way that the kids were playing the guitar. Like, I just thought it was the coolest thing I've ever seen. And my dad loved the movie. My dad loved Jack Black. Um, so I said to my dad, as we're watching that movie, I'm like, I want to take electric guitar lessons. And he was like, bet, like, you got it. Like, you want to quit the piano and play electric guitar? Like, hell yeah. My dad was working at Rock 107 at the time. So, you know, classic rock, me wanting to play electric guitar, watching School of Rock. He was like, this is awesome. So my dad literally that week bought me uh, an electric guitar, an amp, and he, we signed up for electric guitar lessons at Magden and we switched um, from piano to guitar. And I was taking from somebody else at the time, um, didn't really get the best connection with that person, took it for a couple of years, quit, lost interest, and then... When I started high school, end of eighth grade into high school, I really started watching a lot of YouTube. Um, and that's when YouTube was really coming out as really popular. And there was this artist, Tori Kelly. I don't know if you've ever heard of her. Um, she's kind of dabbled in a lot of different genres, but she does a lot of acoustic stuff. And I fell in love with the acoustic guitar. So my dad being awesome, Jim Loftus, I tell him like, hey, I want to play the acoustic guitar. Now he goes out and buys me a tailor acoustic guitar like top of the line Taylor and um we signed up at Magden again for um guitar lessons with Neil Nicastro and Neil is just the most amazing musician man friend person one of the best guys in the world I think kind and talented and has such a gift of teaching kids music um and I just fell in love with going to lessons. We had a blast. He didn't just teach me scales. I mean, he was like, what are the songs that you like to listen to? And that's the kind of songs we'd learn. And it would be Katy Perry and Justin Bieber and Taylor Swift and stuff like that. And I just really got a love for it because of the passion that Neil kind of just exude from him during all of our lessons. I never dreaded going. I never dreaded practicing. I actually wanted to practice because I didn't want to disappoint him and piss him off if I didn't practice what he gave me. So I just enjoyed it so much. And he kind of was telling me, you know, you can make some money by doing this too. And I was like, well, what do you mean? And he was like, you can play gigs. I'm like, well, what's a gig? You know, and I'm 14 years old. Like, I don't know anything, you know? And uh, he's like, you know, you go to bars and they pay you to do live music. I was like, what? And he was like, tell me, yeah, I'm playing at this place and this place. And I was like, that's cool. I mean, we let it go, whatever. And I told him I like to sing here and there and whatever. But the next lesson, I guess my mom was texting Neil like behind my back and was like, you know, Riley really can sing. Like she really can sing. 
And I really think you need to push her to sing because what's good at just playing guitar if you want to like, you know, play out, you can't just play out with a guitar, you got to sing. So he was like, okay, so my next lesson, we're practicing whatever. And he was like, so I heard you can sing really good. And I was like, what? Oh God, like I don't sing in front of people. And um, he's like, you're not leaving here until you sing. So I just taught you that Justin Bieber song. Okay, sing it and play it. So I was like, oh God. So I I was, I was now I was embarrassed and I wanted to go home. So I was like, damn, let me just sing this song, right? So I sing this Justin Bieber song. And he's like, you're really, really good. Like, you know, we got to work on this, work on this, but you really have something there. And I was like, yeah, okay. A couple of days later, I'm at school. We had to put our lockers, our phones in our lockers and Scranton prep is when I went to school. So God forbid we had our phones out. I get my phone out at the end of the day and I have a voicemail from Neil in my phone. And I was like, oh God, I listened to it. And he's like, I think I still have it actually, but He's like, hey, Riley, uh, it's Neil. Uh, I just signed you up for Steamtown American Idol at the Steamtown Mall. So after school today, like you need to go down there because you're singing at the Steamtown American Idol. And I was like, what the actual wow. going on? I was like, I went from not singing in front of anybody. Now Neil and my mom are in cahoots behind my back. Neil goes down to the Steamtown Mall, signs me up for Steamtown American Idol. And I was like, uh, okay. So I called my mom I'm like, mom, what did you guys do? I'm so scared. And mom's like, okay, I'm picking you up now. We're going. So I literally, after school, my mom picked me up from school with my guitar. And like, she already knew about all this. I go down and she has a change of clothes for me. And I go and I do Steamtown American Idol. And I don't remember what place I got, but I just remember doing it. And it was like the first time I really sang in front of anybody. It was, you know, in a crowd in the middle of the Steamtown Mall back when the Steamtown Mall was like bumping. bumping you know? yeah. And, um, that kind of that was it I started going to some open mics after that um Neil would invite me to play I remember one of my first gigs I did with Neil was at Cooper's in Scranton we played outside um and I I sucked man I was bad I was trash I mean I had the, like I was young so I had like a really high-pitched voice you gotta start somewhere yeah yeah I mean I watched some older videos I'm like holy shit I was trash like I can't believe <laughs> people paid for this like this is terrible oh my god but or like my little like amp that I would used to use and like my dad not knowing anything about guitar gear. Like we thought we were doing the right thing. And then you see these guys, with the big sound systems, like I had nothing. Like I was going in with just like my little mic. I knew like 10, 12 songs and I would just repeat them over and over and over again for three hours. And it was probably so cringe for anybody that was there watching me. No. But like you said, you got to start somewhere and that's really it. I mean, it's a long kind of story but that's how I really got into it it's all Neil Nicastro's fault and I say that all the time blame him for everybody that thinks I'm annoying on social media or whatever it's his well, fault. <laughs> it's it's kind of amazing like and there's there's people out there who you know, like him that are are doing what they're meant to do right like yeah. he's like you said a great teacher just a great he's always positive he's always smiling it's like how how, do you, how do you do this how do you how are you always this smiley and happy and positive because always. like it just it baffles me but like those people and thank god like they're put in these positions where in life where like they can have an impact on people such as yourself because let's just say you know he wasn't the, the guy to teach you i mean mm -hmm. where where would you be now who knows right dude i don't know i mean neil i mean me and neil have done so much together like we recorded songs together for my little eps that i put out um, he accompanied me on the voice, you know, an audition I had for the voice back in 2017. We like shipped Neil to New York City and stuck him in a hotel room and he played guitar for me. Like he's been really like my ride or die buddy in this business since day one, you know, and it, we can go months without talking or, you know, but we always stay connected online. And um, if I hear that anybody wants to take lessons for anything, I always say Neil, like Neil told me one time, he's like, yo, he's like, somebody wanted to learn the banjo. I was like, okay. He's like, I bought a banjo and I taught the myself the banjo and I'm giving banjo lessons or whatever the weird instrument was. And I was like, that's just Neil though. You know what I mean? Like he will just, somebody wants to learn something. He's so gifted musically that he could just go buy a random instrument. Maybe I think it was like the mandolin. Maybe it was that, it was something crazy. Now he gives mandolin, you know, whatever. So anybody that comes to me that says, hey, can you teach a guitar? I'm like, hell no. Have you seen me play? I'm not that great with a guitar. You know what I mean? But Neil Nicastro, like, hell yeah. Go, go right to him and 
He's awesome. My mom wanted me to take banjo lessons nice. when I was a kid. And then <laughs> I look back on that and it's like, so yeah. I do this, I do this podcast and I love music and I've surrounded myself with music. Even like my days at the weekend or I was always involved with music and I can't play any music at all whatsoever. So it's kind of ironic, but like my mom looking back, she wanted me to take banjo lessons, but I was like, I wanted to do sports, you mm-hmm. know, and, and my parents didn't have the, I guess the heart to tell me like, Hey dude, like, you know, look at us. We're, you know, five, nine, five, eight, five, six, whatever my mom was. My dad wasn't very tall either. Like we're, we're short white people. Like basketball is not in your future, you know, you know, um, but I want to play sports. And I was like, naturally. Okay. I just never like, like put in the extra effort. I was like, mm-hmm. I want to practice and all the stuff you're supposed to do, but I never like did the extra stuff that like, right. but like none of us did back then either. Like some did, but like majority, like we were riding bikes and we were, I had a, a part-time job and all that kind of stuff. But long story short, my mom wanted me to play banjo. And I didn't want to do that. And I kind of wish that she would have made me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, that's like our, you know, my thing I always say, like my parents, they never pushed, but there was there was always like a little bit of an expectation. Like you need to do something. You know what I mean? Like find out what your thing is and do it. You know what I mean? I watched my dad work so hard every day my whole life with an extremely, I mean, just the most fantastic work ethic you can imagine. Um and just dedication and just not giving up and not quitting. And, you know, there's been times where, you know, I was going to lessons and this is more so before Neil, but I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. My dad's like, well, what are you, a loser? Like, <laughs> you're going to go. Like, come on. Like, you, you start something, you finish it. Love that. You know what I mean? And yeah, I just, I really stuck with this. And, and you know, my dad's my biggest supporter too. Like, I can afford my own instruments now, thankfully, with the grace of God, it continues. But you know, my dad, if I wanted a guitar, if I'm talking to my dad, I'm like, oh, dad, I'm looking at this Martin and I really like this. He's like, okay, all right, nice. And the next day he'll text me and he'll be like, let's go down to, to Jack's and Northeast Music. You want to, you want to buy it? Like, I'll, I'll get it for you. And it just makes him so filled with joy and happiness to, to feel like he's still got a little part of my, you know, I'm, I'm a grown woman, adult, don't live with the guy anymore. I do my own thing, but I still call him every day. And but the way that he still tries to be really supportive and intertwined with my music business. And, you know, if, if my speaker breaks, you know, my dad's ordered a new one, you know what I mean? Like he's just there and that's what he likes to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's definitely like, if I talk about like quitting or anything like that, he's like, yeah, well, you're not a bum. So let's, (laughs) let's, let's just talk ourselves off the ledge for a second, you know? Yeah. He's great. And you're also your, your only child, right? And then you're also his daughter. And you know, I can really he's a girl different... dad through and through. Yeah. You know so I, mean? I have a, a son and a daughter. Um, and I imagine that I'll probably be a little tougher on my son than I would be my daughter. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously I will push them both to to be successful, but I, I imagine that, you know, there's gonna be a different connection that I'll have with my daughter than I will yeah. with my son. I so. can't imagine my dad having a son. I don't know. He's just like such a typical girl dad, you know what I mean? Yeah. Bat your eyelashes, dad, you know, and he's like, all right. You yeah, know, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure you figured it out like, oh, yeah, dad, I was looking at this, uh, whatever. Oh, no yeah, one, I know the no game. One, so don't get it twisted. I know the game all the way through. He's going to watch it, so be careful. Yeah, I know, right? He's going to text me and be like, dad, your next guitar, <laughs> boom, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's well, you know, it's it just goes to show you, like, you know, you, you kind of you're around the right people in life and supportive people in your life and how that, you know, really need the drive and the dedication but like having that support like really helps along the way yeah and um you know my dad he's not naive like he knows that to do this full-time is difficult um so he's always supportive of me you know keeping my full-time job for right now and I give the guys credit that do this full-time because it, it is a hustle I mean it you know it, you a bar cancels on you that's whatever, $250, $300 down for the week. And you got to come up with that in another way. And, um, I don't know if I have the balls to really go full, full throttle and do a full time because it's a hustle. And like Neil, like, I mean, he's really like, I talk about him all the time. I don't want to sound like I'm just like, like stroking his ego, but I mean, he just, 
he's figured it out. I mean, he does the lessons, he does the weddings. I mean, he's got an insane DJ business now with the weddings too. Not only does he do that, he does the acoustic cocktail hours. So he brings mm-hmm. all of his skill sets into his business with his wedding, um, in his wedding seasons. And, you know, I just, I would, I admire that. I don't know if I have that well, drive that these guys do. But. It, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're basically almost an entrepreneur at that point, right? hundred mm-hmm. percent. And it's tough too, because, you know, it's always scary to kind of give up a steady paycheck or guaranteed mm-hmm. paycheck. And also it's hard to really, you know, he's got his, his hands in all kinds of different areas. Like I don't, I'm not great at focusing on many things. I like to focus on right. one or two things and like do them well. I'm not really good at like getting sidetracked, so to speak. So it's, yeah. Again, there's certain people that are able to do that. And I don't know that I'm one of them. No, I, and and I think too, you know, what helps Neil too, and something that I'm grateful I have too, is the support of parents. Um, to plug some of Neil's music, he's got an original song called Lucky. Um, I'm featured on one of his EPs that we did back in like 2017. I'm on a couple of songs, but my favorite song that Neil ever put out, it's called Lucky. And it kind of talks about just kind of the ups and downs a little bit um, that he's experienced and just the support of his mom, especially. And I really connect with him on that because if I didn't have the support from my parents to push through, you know, my, um, I want to say mental breakdowns that I have sometimes with the gigs, cause they do get a lot. Cause I do work full time. I'm in graduate school as well. Wow. And I do the gigs. I play three to four nights a week, you know, so if it wasn't for my parents that were on my side and supporting me, I, I think I would lose my mind sometimes with just being overwhelmed. Um, but Neil's got, got really supportive parents, his mom, especially his mom's awesome. So yeah. yeah, it helps support helps for sure. Yeah. Well, talk about, um, you mentioned earlier, you kind of have a, f- a, f- a few songs that you mm-hmm. uh, recorded that are <laughs> originals, but you kind of, uh, went away from those. Talk about that mm-hmm. kind of part of your life. Yeah. Um, I think with anything, we have areas where we're really strong and areas where we kind of lack. And I think for me as a musician, you know, something that I'm not the most confident in is writing music. Um, and that was always a piece of this that I never really had interest in. And I think that different me that I I'm not like a lot of the guys that are doing this that, you know, are really into songwriting and into this and that. Like, I like songwriting a little bit more now than I used to, but it's not my favorite part. I'm more of a performer. I like to perform, whether that's my own songs, other people's songs. Um, To me, the the fun in this is is being on the stage and performing and entertaining people. Um, Where I feel as some musicians that do this, they really find the joy in songwriting, where for me, that's just not really it. Um, because I just don't think I'm that great at it. Um, but Neil really pushed me to put out some of my own music. Um, when I really started playing out, I say that I started playing out in 2012, but I really got steady with it around 2016, 15, 16. And around then Neil was always like, nice covers, but where are the originals, dude? Like, let's get some originals on. Like, Neil, I can't write a damn song, dude. Like I, I can't, like, it sounds stupid. I, nothing sounds right. He's like, dude, who cares? Just write a damn song. Like just put it together. He's like, do you think I like all my songs? No, but I just, I write songs. So it's, you know, I'm writing songs. And, um, he helped me write a bunch of songs and he hooked me up with windmill agency in Mount Cobb, um, Eric, and we recorded them and Neil produced them with him and we mastered them and we wrote them and they're, they are what they are. <laughs> They're on, I'm just gonna say they are what they are. Um, they're on all streaming platforms, Apple Music, Spotify, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, that's definitely something that I want to, you know, I think I've been thinking about it a lot lately and I want to get better at it. So I think I got to chill with the covers, chill with the gigs maybe a little bit and focus a little bit on writing my own music because it's a piece of art that you have forever. And I appreciate the songs that I have and you know, it took a lot of work and a lot of effort, but I think you can only, you know, that's a skill that I, I'm not ever going to improve on unless I do it. So I think I just got to get into it. I just feel so awkward. I don't know what it is. What do you think you struggle with? Talking. Is it, is it content? Is it, is it? Yeah. It's like, I don't want to tell anybody anything. And I feel like when you write 
songs. Like it's very personal. Mm -hmm. And I, and I feel like if it's not personal, then it's just corny. You know what I mean? Like I think sure. really good lyrics are like deep, meaningful lyrics, I think. And then again, listen to pop songs right on the radio. They're kind of lyrics or nothingness. You know what I mean? They're right. great songs, but the music that I like to listen to, like I listen to a lot of soul R and B. I grew up on Motown music. I grew up on that kind of stuff. So when you're, you know, that vibe is more deep lyrically and just, I don't know. I just, I hate talking like me doing this podcast right now for the last like half hour before I got, I was pacing around. I'm like, Oh my God, I'll sing in front of a thousand people and like act like it's like nothing. But if I have to talk to somebody about me or about anything to do with me, I'm like, Oh God, this is terrible. Don't worry. I have like zero viewers. (laughs) <laughs> listeners. yeah okay yeah <laughs> and um so I think just like opening up and being vulnerable in songwriting is just so intimidating to me I like the process yeah music I like writing the music the the experience of being in the studio is so fun it's so cool you, you feel like a pop star like it's awesome and it's creative and I love that piece but the lyrics pop go just yeah I, over the edge well I talk about that a lot too because if I were to write a song which again, we've already discussed, I, I don't have the ability to be a musician or a songwriter. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have to like write about like my life or, or something personal or like- Yeah, because like what and, the hell else are you going to write about, right? You yeah, have to- and, and like, you know, I always say like, what are you going to do? Like, I have a great life. I'm very happy. Like I have a beautiful wife, beautiful children, great job. Like my life is pretty awesome. Yeah. And like, how do, how do I sing about that? Like right. without being like an asshole, you know? Yeah, like, like how great my life is. Like, yeah, like, damn, like <laughs> you know, so, and, and, you know, I think you have but to be Neil like. Neil would say, Neil would say, okay, man, so let's write about how great your life is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I would give Neil every excuse under the sun about why we couldn't write a song that day. Yeah. And he'd be like, okay, so we're going to write a song about why you're telling me that we can't write a song. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't know how to do that. He's like, well, just let's just start. You know what I mean? So he, he's, Yeah. All of this, Neil. Neil's gonna watch this and be like, "Oh, this kid." Yeah, get me in the studio tomorrow. Excuses, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I I watch um a lot of your your people on here, and everyone's just so gifted, like in the whole just realm of music. And I just really want to strengthen that part of me because I'm just known as a cover artist, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I Pays think I. Yeah, it does for sure. You know, it's unfortunately, um, you know, original music, no one's knocking down doors and paying big money to, to play original music. Times have changed. Yeah. But but then again, we live in a time where social media, I mean, nobody really needs labels the way that they did back in the day. You know what I mean? You can right. start a TikTok, Instagram, SoundCloud, YouTube, all of this stuff and put your own music out there. Um, an artist that I really like, um, his name is Russ. He's like a hip hop R&B artist um no label and he's on the radio you know what I mean like he's done it all himself so I mean 20 years ago that was not a thing you know right. so that's, that's true times are are a lot better for you know for songwriters but like you said it's still not you're not with unless that, you're well, selling out you know what I mean but with that being said I always say I, I try and live by it only takes one and mm-hmm. I, when I say that I mean like it only takes one person to hear you right. know, a song you wrote or sang or whatever it might be. It only takes one person to maybe hear this podcast. I, I have to bet on the underdogs and UFC fights because I say it only right. takes one punch to knock somebody out. That's 100%. You know, so you yeah. never know. Yeah, I, you know, I have like a very, it's weird because I have a very businessy mind, yet I'm doing music. Do you know what I mean? So like for my live music business, like I focus a lot on posting on social media and I focus a lot on graphics and I try to post all the time. And, um, when it comes to looking for new places, like how many times do I text you? Like, yo, Popco, you got any new venues for me, bud? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm always looking for new spots, dude. And I, I message, like, I'm probably so annoying to these bars. Like I really am probably the biggest pain in the ass because I'm in every bars inbox, like that I would like to play at. And I'm like pitching myself and sending pictures and videos like I'm like if you went through my Facebook inbox dude you'd be so embarrassed for me like I'm (laughs) out here like just throwing myself because I want to you know I want to play everywhere you know what I mean I always I love making new connections in this business and 
um, meeting new people. I've met so many people out in the, in the scene. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of like, I have that more side of my mind, like the businessy, like let's really get a good business, live music business. Like I've, I've, I have ADHD too. So your viewers are going to be like, what the hell is wrong with this girl? She's just all over the place, but I've spent a lot of time doing this. Right. And I've been able to figure out my strengths and my weaknesses. And I think I've come to the understanding that songwriting and being an original artist is a little bit of a struggle for me, but I'm really good at covers and I'm really good at live music and I'm really good at entertaining people when I'm out playing. Um, and I think that, and we can get into this too a little bit if we have some time, just the type of music that I play is very different than um, a lot of live musicians. So I've kind of found my niche in that and that aspect of it. So I really push branding myself as a live musician. Um, and I've kind of let go a little bit of the original artist piece. Let the other guys have that, that are gifted in that area. More power to you guys. God bless, because I wish I had that, that creative piece that a lot of these fantastic musicians have. Um, so I've just kind of learned to like maximize my strengths and just ignore my weaknesses a little bit. And it works, man. And, you know, it is, it is what it is. I, I like my friends like Black Tie Stereo and Neil and everybody that puts out original music. I just say support them because they are truly gifted musicians and have a great skill with original music as well. Yeah. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. I mean, talk a little bit about your, you know, who Riley Loftus is, you know, who's getting booked out at these places because, you know, shame on me. I, I heard your name all the time, especially at the V spot. I think Vinny is like yeah. your number one fan. Yeah, he is. Um, and I'm I, his. And, yeah, and he used to do some advertising with me at the weekender days and even the, on the radio days. And I'd always hear your name. He'd always be talking about you. And then I only recently saw you perform. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. And that's why when you when you text me and say, hey, do you know anybody? I'm like, yeah. I have no problem being like, here's this guy's number. I think, Thanks, you know, man. Ryan at Beer Boy is like... Mm -hmm booked a few shows with you and hopefully Tom he's one or... of the ones that I'm always a pain in the ass to trying to get in for no, he loves it though <laughs> he, you know he's like he started doing the Sunday thing uh mm -hmm. so on Sundays live music at Beer Boys in Wilkes-Barre awesome place yeah. uh yeah so and he's like I don't know who to reach out to I don't have these contacts I'm like I'll help you and mm -hmm. I think in two days we booked him out through October but um what was I going to say oh just you in general and like did Tom get yeah. back to you from Union Craft House he did. I got one finally after being left on red for eight years. <laughs> well, another, <laughs> another example of like, he's like, I don't, you know, I didn't, I don't know her name. So I wasn't. Well, like, if you haven't seen somebody play, you oh, you know, absolutely. a lot of times bars want to make sure that their musicians aren't going to make people leave. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they, they, they well, want to know that it's going to help their business. So. Yeah. Point is I will vouch for I Riley Loftus after seeing her perform sure. live. So if people don't know who you are and they're watching this or listening to this, talk about, you know, who you are and what you do <laughs> when you're up performing yeah so i don't play margaritaville and i don't play brown eyed girl that's the two things that i say all the time no shade to anybody that plays those songs great songs my dad's a huge jimmy buffett fan like in the summertime you can't not hear jimmy buffett when jim Loftus is around like he loves him, right but that's just not my style i grew up in philadelphia i grew up with my dad running a oldie station. So I grew up on Motown music. I grew up um, loving R&B music. Um, I remember when I was in seventh grade, I was rapping Lil Wayne's Lollipop, like around the house. And my dad was like, what the, you go to a Catholic <laughs> school and you're singing Lollipop. Like what's happening? I'm paying for you to come home from school yeah. and sing Lollipop. Like it was, just didn't make sense. So, you know, I just grew up loving that kind of music. And when I was, I think I mentioned before, Tori Kelly was somebody that I found on YouTube um, when I was like eighth grade, ninth grade. Um, and she did R&B music and she looked like me. She was like, I dyed my hair, but I had blonde hair for a gazillion years. And she was playing a tailor and I just connected with her and her sound was very soulful, very R&B. And the way she played guitar, the acoustic guitar, she played it like she was playing jazz. And I just kind of would take my lessons from Neil and I would watch her and I would just kind of emulate both of what I was being taught by him, like theory wise and what she was teaching me performing wise, just from watching her videos. And I just kind of found my sound that way. 
Um, and you know, when I go to pick out my set list, you know, I'm putting Beyonce on there. I'm putting on Destiny's Child. I'm putting on rap music and I'm turning them into R&B songs. I'm putting on early 2000s pop songs. I'm playing Britney Spears. And I found that if I'm going to make this work for myself, then I have to be different because there's nothing that exciting about me. I'm, you know, I'm just this regular, regular lady. You know what I mean? So if I want to make a, a, a name for myself where people enjoy listening to me, I want them to enjoy listening to me, but also when they go out to a bar, they're listening to me play live music of songs that they never hear out. Um, I really just tried to create a set list that is fun, that is really 2000s pop and R&B heavy. Um, I really appeal to like the 30 year old range because I'm doing a lot of songs that like they love. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've just found that being different has really helped me kind of keep this going for a while. Um, I love when I'm playing at the V spot and I start playing, I don't know, like crazy R&B songs or whatever. And people are turning their heads and they're like, is she really doing that? And I'm like, yes, I'm really doing that. You know, and I, I, uh, I'm not for everybody. That's for sure. If you don't like pop music, if you don't like R&B music, if you don't like, um, that kind of stuff and you really love country music, don't ever come to a Riley Loftus gig. Cause it, I am not singing country music. I can't, my soul just won't let me do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's good. And uh, There's one Morgan Wallen song that I like, I love, and I will die listening to that song. I love it. That's about it. Um, I threw a couple Nickelback songs in there too. Cause my mom's Hell yeah. like, Hell Nickelback yeah. and like, fuck. All right. How about some um, Creed? Can we do some Creed in there? Love Creed. Love yeah. Creed. Don't do oh, Creed, yeah. but I love Creed, dude. And I heard that they're going on another tour and I don't know if that, that's true. Well, they're playing in Hershey on August 23rd, I think. Yeah, I, I need to be there. I and love they're, they're playing, I think, Allentown uh, December 2nd. Yeah, I, I will be there. Like, I love Creed. But, yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know. There's there's people that are great at country music. Let them do it. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of guys that are fantastic at classic rock. Let them do it. You know what I mean? Like, and I just got to find my thing. And I found my thing. Um, yeah. And I don't know. I just... I have fun. I, I I play songs that I like, you know what I mean? And that might sound like a little like egotistical or selfish or whatever, but I'm singing these songs, man, three nights a week. You know what I mean? And I want to enjoy it too. You know what I mean? And then, and I found that when I'm enjoying myself, the crowd's enjoying themselves too, because right. it feeds off, you know? So um, I love it. But I love the fact that you kind of have your own twist on these songs because you're not playing like straight up R&B songs. Like there's right. like a definitely a, a little Riley Loftus flair to it. Hard to explain, man, unless you've seen it, you know, yeah. it's, it's its own thing for sure. Yeah, right. it's the V spot. I'm actually I picked up a gig today at the V spot last minute. Vinny texted me, I guess uh, something went on. They have the line dancing on Wednesdays. Um, it's not going down this Wednesday. So he texted me if I wanted to play Wednesday and any chance I get to play at the B spot. That's another thing. Vinny Archer has been a integral part of my, I could cry, like literally thinking about the, the way that Vinny has helped put me on in this scene. Um, but he texted me before and he was like, you want to play on Wednesday? I'm like, hell yeah. I want to play at the B spot Wednesday. I mean, playing at the B spot is not like, it's, it's unlike any other bar, man. It's, the best. I've always I've always said if you uh get booked at the V spot you've made it. Dude, I remember I was it was 2016 and I was starting my crazy Facebook messaging like I do. These if any bars watching this ever like, oh yeah, that loftus kids in the DMs again trying to get booked. But <laughs> um I messaged Vinny to play at the V spot. Now this is well before the V spot had any type of stage, no lights. It was a smoking bar back then, okay? Mm -hmm. Um but I knew that if you were good, you played at the V spot. You know what I mean? And I knew that if you played, and it was it used to be four hour gigs. It used to be eight to midnight. Now Vinny does eight to 11. And pop go, I'm telling you, I probably had 20 songs that I knew now at this point. So I'm like, how the hell am I going to, if I ever played the V spot, make 20 songs last for four hours? Because I was just going to, I was sucked back in the day, bro, bad, like terrible, it was trash. Play these songs over and over and over again. I messaged the V spot and I was like, pitch myself I'm like hey I really want to play at your spot man I heard great things like I was 20 years old I'm like come on let's 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 see what let's see what he says and he messaged me back and he booked me he never saw me play he just was like all right I'm gonna give this kid a chance I was on a Tuesday night 
Vinny used to have music Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And Tuesday was a little bit slower. So I think he would put the newer guys on Tuesday, see how they did, then move them, you know, through the busier nights. And I was on a Tuesday. And that day, dude, I, to my mom all day long, I was like, mom, 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 I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I played the V spot tonight. I'm so scared. Everyone that plays there is so good. Everyone that plays there is so good, mom. I'm trash. Like, I can't play the V spot. And Vinny made the big, like, like he does for everybody that plays the V spot. He makes them feel like the biggest musician in the world. You know what I mean? And he was posting all over Facebook and I just felt so cool. And he's treated me like that ever since. And like, you know, when you go to the V spot, you get treated like you are royalty in there, no matter who you are. You know what I mean? You're like a little celebrity in there. Even if they don't even know your name, they make you feel like you're part of the family. Yeah. Um, and Vinny has just always supported me. He's always been a huge fan of mine. I'm a huge fan of his. Um, if anybody knows me, they know I don't really drink at all. I drink here and there, but if I'm drinking, I'm going to the B spot. You know what I mean? If I'm going out, I'm going to the B spot. And it's like my only place I'll go if I'm not playing. Um, because it's just Vinny is just one of the best guys in the scene for sure. He's created a special place there and he's been so supportive of all the musicians over the years. So they're here an original artist or a cover artist or whatever it might be. He's just, he's made a, a point to like be that staple and that go-to. And I wish we had more of those. Oh my God. He, he makes, he makes live music a big deal. You know what I mean? He makes, he makes it a point that, you know, like let's support musicians and support each other's bars. And um, Vinny's not just that way with musicians. I mean, he's like that with other people's businesses too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? And I think that's why he receives such greatness in return um with success and with everything else because he's he gives that out to other people um you know my mom she'll walk in the v spot and my mom when i'm playing at the v spot she can't wait to go to the v spot because she's gonna see Vinny and she loves Vinny and oh my god Vinny said this and Vinny said that but you know it's just his personality he just fills up the room with such great energy and like you were saying like anybody that comes in there he just makes every musician feel like they're the best musician in the world yeah he really is awesome and another person who's like just you know put on this earth doing the thing he's supposed to be doing absolutely <laughs> you know absolutely i mean and he's created such a scene here for us you know what i mean um i always say like you know northeastern pennsylvania we have a lot of great things well, not so great things lately, but one thing that I am so proud of our area for is its appreciation for music and live music and all different kinds of music. Something about Vinny that I appreciate is he will have any type of genre in there and any band, he'll give any band a chance, you know what I mean, like, that wants to come and play. And, you know, it's just, he really has kept the scene so strong um, in our area with live music and, as, you know, the other bars as well, but you know, Vinny, he appreciates it with the lights and the stage. He makes it an experience for bands to come and play there. Yeah. Um, really great person. In our area has such a, I don't even know how to explain it, but the talent that comes out of here is just awesome. you know, second to none. And I, I, I feel like a broken record because I say this all the time uh, on, on this podcast that I would put this area and the talent here up against any other city and I just interviewed, and I love this, uh, the band, uh, If Kansas Had Trees. Mm -hmm. And the kid was like, you know, it's it's Wilkes-Barre and Scranton versus the world. Like, Absolutely, man. It, and it's such a cool, like he wants everybody. Like it's 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 not like their band versus somebody else or the, their band versus someone in, 100%. you know, Nashville. It's it's all of us versus the world. And I, I love that, that just Look, that thought. It's, it's such a, there's no, there's no like, competition between anybody do you know what i mean it's all, we all are appreciative of each other and each other's talent like i know for me like all of my friends really are people that i've met through the scene i mean all of all of my musician friends all my actual friends that aren't musicians like i've met from being out in these bars doing the music stuff and you know i just i have like a list like if i can't make a gig. You know what I mean? I've got like 10, 15 people that I know are solid, talented, awesome musicians that I would recommend in a heartbeat. I blast them like, yo guys, I can't make it tonight. You guys want this one. You want this one. You want this one. And, um, I, I love just putting other people onto, especially the newer ones that are coming up, the younger people. 
I'm I'm getting old now. So, Jeez. you know, the younger guys, yeah. I am, I really am getting washed up. But some of the younger guys coming up, I was at um, Litzy's the other day in Avoca playing. Oh, and- no shit. I, right, I live right down the road from there. Oh, yeah, yeah. You should have came, man. Um, I've never been in there before. She was looking for, for new people. And I gave her five, ten people that I was like, all right, you, you ever have this guy here? Nope. Call him. You ever have this guy here? Nope. Call him. And that's how everybody is. We're just big support of one another, you know, and um, somebody that doesn't live around here. Do you remember Asia Lena Bonnets? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she moved, but she was someone that me and her were like, oh my God, tighter than tight back in the day. And we did like the same thing, you know what I mean? But different. And you would think like, oh, these two girls, the same age, doing the same thing. Like they would hate each other. We loved each other. You know what I mean? And we would support each other, do gigs together all the time. It's just how it's always been. Just a great, great scene. Well, when you were probably five years old, that wasn't the case yeah. around here. <laughs> right. it, was very cut- right. it was very cutthroat. It was very like, you know, every band felt that, you know, they should be on the the biggest shows or they, you know, they kind of owned a part of town or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Um, which I mean, I get to a degree, like I love that con- kind of a competitive edge, but like right. not for this, like, you know, like, yeah. like you're saying, but you should, you should be, and it's, it's us against everybody else. Listen, man, we all need each other. Right. You know what I mean? The bars need us. We need the bars. You know what I mean? We're we're not live musicians if the bars stop booking live music. You know what I mean? The the people that want to go listen to live music are gonna look for it. You know what I mean? So the bars, they need us too. You know what I mean? We all need to work together. And um I always say like there's room for everybody. You know what I mean? There is room for everybody and everybody brings something different to the table. Like every band, even if you're the same genre, you bring a different spin and and you're not, there's always going to be room for everybody. So just be well, the cool. Funniest, the funniest thing is like when this was happening, you know, 20 years ago, there were probably twice as many places to play at than there are now. Oh yeah. So now everyone has, there's Shit, less places man, to play. Even five, six years ago. I mean, I'm yeah. looking at some of these places I used to play back in the day. I'm like, I don't even know if that bar is open or I don't mm-hmm. even know, like, or I'll message that bar and I'll be like, they're not doing it anymore. It's, it's definitely after COVID, man, it really kind of, it's gotten diff- more difficult, but let's let's play a game i'm with it okay i need you i need you to do this for me okay you know how you have your dad kind of wrapped around your finger yep all right so <laughs> what do you need is this a favor or a game this <laughs> a favor so oh, I you. You, you you need to drop the uh hey dad like we we should open like a, a small little club rockies for, is for sale man let's go dad let's juju go. But my mom is really good with the sage and stuff like that. So maybe we can just go sage it up and that'll be perfect. Yeah. Well, I feel like my calling is to, ha- I just want to, I don't want anything big because I don't, A, I don't have money, right? Yeah, uh, does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like, I'll help fill the rooms. Um, Absolutely. I, nothing big. I don't want to, I don't want a big place. Just something like, you know, kind of small and manageable. Like ideally, you, you know, you have to kind of have the, uh, the liquor license because that's how you're going to make money. Yep. Um. But yeah, just like a, a cool, like maybe open like, I don't know, three, four days a week, live entertainment. Oh, yeah. Dude, I'm with it, man. I, I always say every day, love my job. My boss is watching this. I love my job. But sometimes I just want to do this full time, work for myself and just really throw myself into this 100%. And that might be our way, Popco. We got to maybe have Big Jim endorse it. Maybe. I don't know. You can be a Pretty silent fun. investor. That's side of it. Yeah. Silent, silent investor. investor. That's, the, that's what it would be too. He'd be like, ah, you guys can handle that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about booking artists, but like, we'll figure it out. Yeah, sure. Why not? Oh, we figure, okay. Everybody figures everything out all the time, right? That's just part of life. So we could figure it out. Everything, every challenge, Pablo, this is my, my motto to you. Not really a motto, but my words of wisdom from my peanut brain. Every challenging thing that we've had, you know, we've faced in our life, we've always overcome it. We have because here we have to. You've yeah. always made it through, whether it was difficult, easy, whatever. You got through it. So, if we booked a little or got a little spot, we get people filled with local people first. You know, right? Having a light issue in your fancy yeah, ass. Yeah, yeah. My cat. My cat decided. It- oh, it's okay. My dog Chloe, who is like. I don't even know what the hell's wrong with her. So many mental health issues, but 
Um, she's been barking out there for the last hour. So your viewers are going to be like, this is, this girl is crazy. I, I barely heard it. So yeah, you're good. I nice. apologize for kind of <laughs> <It's okay>. technical <laughs> yeah. difficulties. Yeah, yeah man. so drop that, drop that. That I'll drop that. You here. drop that. You're like, oh, I kind of wish I had a place to. Tomorrow. Tell you, him to watch the podcast. And that this that might be his way to get in first to see it. Then we'll really drop the bomb on him. Yeah, like just be like, I need a place to like, I need I need a like a, a house bar that you can play at all the time. Hell yeah. I, I'm so game. We got to get Vinny in on that too. Cause I feel like anything bar music venue related that Vinny would touch would turn to gold. You know what yeah, I mean? Though, if it was in Scranton, would that be, would that be competition for him? So maybe we have to go down like further South. You would just have know. to serve terrible food and <laughs> terrible drinks. And then no, it would be no competition. Yeah, Cause it's and make no money. Okay. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Just have a just bar, just bands only, no food. That's it. <laughs> yeah, water. Yeah, you know, water and soda. Just water, no drinks. <laughs> water, soda, Gatorade. It might just, it might just be you, me, your wife, and my parents <laughs> coming to that. <laughs> that place. That's fine. I'm good. That works oh, for me. God. But I mean, like, is I mean, have you come across any obstacles? Like, you know, when you were very young, getting into this game. And then obviously, uh, you know, being a woman, is that play a factor into yeah. this whole thing? Dude, I get left on red constantly from bars. Bars give me the hardest time. Um, and, you know, I, I just the other day, like, and I'm like, I'm psychotic a little bit. Like I've, I'm insane. And I try to book far in advance because I need to feel for myself that like this is going to sustain you know what I mean and um so I wanted to finish the year off and I got to I was looking at my book that I've got right here and I'm old school I don't use google calendar I don't do nothing like that I'm an old gym bought this you know book you know whatever where I put my dates and I was looking and I saw October and it was empty and I was like oh no so you're telling me that I'm only going to have a live music business until September and then I'm just going to crash and burn and I've got nothing and like that's the thoughts that go through my head and that might be one of my biggest obstacles is myself right because I'll I have like imposter syndrome where like well people will tell me like oh you're awesome and I'll be like really you know what I mean like are you sure like so I saw like empty dates I'm like holy shit I better fill this so I started my my looking for new places going to see where other people are playing trying to get an idea of where are some good spots and messaging messaging if I open my messenger right here, I could read off 50 bars that don't even respond to me, that view my message, that like don't even answer. Um, Let's call them I, out right now. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, and I just keep going. You know what I mean? If, you're, if they tell me no, then I'm asking the wrong bar. You know what I mean? I just keep going. So that's an obstacle. I mean, it's just, I, I feel like I still have to prove myself that I can do a good job when I'm booked. Do you know what I mean? And I don't know if that's because I'm a woman. I don't know if it's because I'm young still. I don't know if it's because of the music that I play. Um, because I'm not in here singing the Beatles every night. I'll throw a Beatles song in and I'm not here singing the Stones. You know what I mean? Um, and and that's not because I don't love that music. I mean, my dad works at Rock 107. You know what I mean? I get the let out with something that Rock 107 did. I don't know if you guys still do it. Do you guys still do that? Ah, I don't think so. I should probably know that, but I, I haven't just, heard. You know, me and my dad would listen to Get the Let Out and just listen to like Leonard Skinner and Pink Floyd and all this stuff on Rock 107. I love that music, but I don't play it because other people got that. You know what I mean? So I don't know if it's it's the music that I play or what, but if you love me, you love me. If the bars that don't know me, they don't know me. And I don't know if they care to know me either. Um, I think it's probably some of the unknown. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's, I don't think it's anything. Tom, like we're going to, we're going to shade Tom real quick. No yeah, shade, but he didn't, he didn't, he left me on red for how many years, dude? Six, to, seven years. To, to his, to, you know. And that's no, fair. no shade to him. He never saw me. You know what I mean? So he didn't know like, who's this Riley Loftus kid? Like you can really yeah. you can make yourself sound like whatever you want in a Facebook message or an email. You know what I mean? But if you've never seen somebody play, you don't know, you know what, what it's going to be like um until you hooked me up with him and you were like no she's all right man like answer her you know what I mean so yeah I think that the struggle for me is just kind of the people that aren't familiar with me just proving myself still and um 
God, 12, 13 years later, I'm still in that boat where I got to show people like, okay, I'm not just up here for fun. Like I'm really, I really do this, you know? Well, I'm still getting 10%, right? Hell yeah. Oh, damn. I got to, I got to back pay for the beer boys gigs. <laughs> I got, you're like, wait, you're like Chris Jenner. I got to back pay for the no. beer boys gig that I did a couple weeks ago. No, um, like I said, I mean, you're one of those people that I would, you know, have no problem. And that's why I sent to, to Ryan. I'm like, or I, I told the musicians, like I sent to him, like tell him pop go sent you because like, he'll know that way. Yeah. Like you're not a bum. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I try, man, you know, but like I said, you know, every day I wake up, and I put 110% into this live music stuff. I really do. Um, I I blast messages out, try to get new places to book me um, that I'd like to play at. Um, I share, I create graphics. I, you know, I, I really try to push my business. Um, I don't just book the gigs and show up. You know what I mean? And I, and I do that for the bars too. You know what I mean? Right. I try to to give as much publicity as I can to the bars, because like, like I was saying before, you know, the bars stop booking the live music. I'm out of business, you know, right. now. so I really try to just have a really strong social media presence. And I, I work hard at this stuff. Um, and I take my live music business very seriously. And, um, whereas maybe when I was younger, I didn't so much, I just kind of played out. And I think you can tell there's a big, in the last, maybe, two or three years, there's just a big improvement in my stage presence and my business mind. I've just really wanted to take this, you know, I, I don't know how long I'll be doing it. So I yeah. want to do it for, you know, do it well. So. Well, yeah, I think you do it well. And, you know, you talk about making your own graphics and I think you, outside of being a performer and uh, <clears throat> all that kind of stuff, you also have to do your own marketing, which you're I doing. Do. Yeah. But like I uh, I'll probably screw this up with the, but yeah, this little, yeah. this, the schedule, right off this July schedule. It's very, Fabulous. um, very, uh, give me like very Taylor Swift vibes. You like that? Are you, are you a Swifty? Hell no. no I didn't, I didn't think so. But this, <laughs> Listen, this I, me, this I'm going to get awesome. so much hate for that. Taylor Swift is a fantastic songwriter. She has figured it out. She is an incredible marketer, an incredible musician, an incredible songwriter an incredible artist like she has figured it out i don't know if you can curse on here on your podcast it's the internet okay do whatever, it, do whatever I, you want. she's figured it the fuck out man like and trust me i curse real bad if you know me in real life anybody that knows that knows that but i've been trying to be cool with you but <laughs> um but i just i'm not i am like i'm wearing you can't see it but i'm wearing a tupac shirt right now so nice. like it's not really but that is a little tail i might have to delete that now that you said that <laughs> redo it <laughs> <laughs> but it is a little Taylor Swift, but yeah, I got to pull it up here too. I, I try, you know what I mean? I, I've, this is another thing with social media. I found out that it's a very saturated place. So if I just post a status and this is for, you know, advice for, if I can give any advice for musicians too, like when you're trying to work on social media a little bit to promote yourselves, make the damn graphics, get on canva.com, pay the $14.99 a month for the pro Canva. Y'all can afford it. If you're playing gigs, you can put the 15 bucks aside. It's worth it. Get the, the, the Canva where you can use the cool graphics, the, the fonts and all this stuff. And when you're posting about stuff, make a graphic for it. Don't just post a status. Don't just make an event. Cause how many events do we get invited to that? We just ignore We don't even look at them. Don't even open them. But when you're scrolling, we all sit there and mindlessly scroll all day long. You know what I mean? As much yep. as we hate to admit it, we do. I'm going to notice somebody that posts a big ass thing that says Riley Loftus live music at the freaking B spot Wednesday, July 3rd in big ass red and black letters more than I'd read a little status. You know what I mean? So I found that that helps too. Another thing for bands, if you're trying to get booked, something that I found really works for me is when I send my little message tailored to that venue, send a picture of yourself. You know what I mean? Send a video of you playing or send a, a live shot or something so that somebody could put a face to what they're reading. Because when there's a picture involved or some type of media far beyond words, people can make a more, you know, significant connection to you with that. And there's what I found is I get ignored way. I get ignored all the time, all the time. But I get ignored way less if I put a little bit more, more effort into my message and I send a photo or, you know, and bars appreciate you know, the graphics and stuff when you're promoting, when you're playing. So that's, that's just great advice. That's my great advice, advice from an old timer, man. I'm really, I, I 
people laugh at me when I say that, but I really am like, you know, I'm going on 13 years of doing this. So that's another thing. I don't think people realize that I've really been at this shit for quite a minute. Um, yeah. so. Well, and what's next for Riley Loftus, you know? Oh, what's next for Riley Loftus is I'd like to keep doing this damn thing as long as I possibly can. Um, I'd like to, man, I have 15 gigs booked in August. Um, I would be way more if I didn't have my full-time job, but I do love that as well. So just kind of keep balancing, man. I'd like to really find new new venues to play at. I'm always trying to get my feet wet with new places, make new friends when I'm out too. I love meeting people. And um, yeah, just keep this going, man, as long as I can. I appreciate people like you that, that keep us relevant, you know what I mean? And you make, make us have an importance here. And, you know, I just hope I have success the way I have in the last couple of years and the next years to come, for sure. Well, I think if you keep pushing, then there's no... Uh way around it i mean like i Thanks. said i've known you for uh, i've known of you for a long time and then mm -hmm. uh the fact that i got to see you perform live i mean it just kind of tied it all together and once again i will vouch for you every day of the week i mean and you're playing all over the place and this won't re release until probably july 12th so i won't get into too many dates prior to that but you got you know the new bennies and greenridge uh fantastic spot fantastic yeah. spot. wonderful patio. formerly uh morgan's morgan's pub yeah mm -hmm. So that's a great outside wow. patio there. Um, but yeah. Uh, uh, oh, I got new merch coming out, Johnny. Oh, Pop. Shit. I got new merch coming out. Well, you left your place, so you can't make my shirts for me anymore. So I had to figure out how to do it on my own. And so what'd you do? They're, they're little back alley shirts. I'm not going to lie. But okay. You know, I did them all on my own. I used Shopify and all that. So that's coming out in the next week or so. You want a little preview? Sure. A little preview? I'm Let's still see. figuring it out, man. I, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Sometimes I think I'm like psychotic with the things I get myself involved with. I don't even hold on well, a second. Well, I hope they come out nice because I mean, it's, it's one of those things you're always kind yeah, of. Yeah, me too, man. I'd be really embarrassed if they didn't. <laughs> well, you, so you never... a little, got a little, I don't know if you can see it really well, but we got okay, a little yeah, yeah. sweatshirt. I did something cool and I think the, I hope the bars don't get pissed about this. I don't know. I don't think they would. I think they might like it, but you know how like real bands, like I don't consider myself a real art, you know, real bands, how they have like tour, tour dates, yeah. Art with the tour dates on the back. So I did something like that. And you're not gonna be able to see well over the video, but I kind of did a summer 2024 on the back of a hoodie of oh, all sick. my dates booked for the summer. Like um that. with all the bars on here. Um and in the description on here, I, I listed all the bars' names. So it gives the bars a little bit of clout too, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, so I got that coming out. That's a little white sweatshirt coming out. Okay. That's on the back. Let's see. We got a little t-shirt action right here. So right. yeah. Well, if for some reason they don't t -shirt, hit me up. Yeah. If, if for some reason they don't come out to uh, your standards, let me know. You and Renee ordered um, trial ones today. I okay. Them, and we're going to see how they came out. And as long as all looks well, we're going to go with it. Um, tell tell Jim to bring that to the office. I, I've got a. I've got tell Jim I need some Rock 107 merch. <laughs> so do I. This like... is this is from 2019. Hold on. Yeah, it is. It's from 2019. My my second. I had Pat, your guy for promotion director, Pat. Yeah. I had to stock him down at the Taylor Deli promotion a couple weeks ago and beg him for a t-shirt because my dad just pretends like he has no idea where t-shirts are kept at the station. I just wanted a damn Rock 107 shirt, man, and I could. The man's the 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 big boss up there, and I still can't get a shirt. So well, he's he's out there. I think he gets his own done on his own. He's, he's he not like pulling. He's not. But he's because, not pulling from. Because Popco, it is embroidered. I, so is this. This is actually. Printed. He needs it embroidered. Yes. Yeah, so well, this is embroidered. This is. He's uh, bougie. Yeah. This is from my golf tournament. Like I said, from 2019. It was. Yeah. Uh, was I like. Tournament? See, I like what you did there. I like that you put the. I, you probably were wearing that today, but. I, was. I like that you put that on for this, knowing that it was me on the podcast tonight. It was just you. You think like a true, yeah, businessman. Yeah. I see that. Shout out to all. I sold this uh, sponsorship to uh, my buddy Josh Cato at the oh, Cato. Plug Agency. yourself. Go right ahead. Hell yeah. I sold that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, my dad's gonna love that. Wait till I. I'm gonna hang up with you. Hang up like I'm nine years. <laughs> get off with you, and I'm gonna call you on your rotary back. dial. Yeah, really. And I'm going to tell my dad, oh, I did Popco's podcast. He's going to say, oh, good. I'm glad you didn't stand up again. And I said, and guess what he's wearing? And he's going to say, what? And I'm going to say, a Rock 107 shirt. And he's embroidered, gonna... embroidered polo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
But yes, I did wear this to work today. And I was like, ah, I'm not going to change it tonight. Wow. Wouldn't, wouldn't make sense. It was yeah. very authentic for us tonight. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I'm sure. I know you've got a lot to do. You probably have to catch up on some sleep. Um, all that. Yeah, my stuff. next uh, graduate school class starts on Wednesday or Thursday on the 4th of July. Actually, I do it online. What? So Oh, yeah. Don't even get me started. So that's why when I was like, I got Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, I was like, Free bunch of free time. Let's go. So well, I'm glad we finally made this happen. I'm glad we made this happen a year later. I think I think it all kind of happened as it should, right? For sure. For sure. And I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you not thinking I'm a total bitch, like loser, like writing me off completely after all the times I you know dropped you last minute. But listen, these things happen, life happens. um... and just know it's not you. Just know I'm totally psychotic. So it's me. It's me. It's you, it's you it's not me yeah no you're and you what you do for us and for every i mean you don't just have musicians on your podcast i mean you have all different types of people that are kind of killing it in whatever area that they're in um so i appreciate you and what you do and and kind of you know allowing us this space to kind of plug ourselves and get you know to know each other on a on a better level and um you really got a good thing obviously all your awards and everything shows that so Hell yeah. Look at all what? those deep music what? awards what? in the back and everything else. What? Yeah. But you do a great job, man, for real. I appreciate it. And I, I really am thankful that you had me on. No, thank you. I mean, um, it's it, you guys allow me to to what I call this silly little podcast. Um, and I'm thankful for that. And that's oh, awesome, man. I remember when um when I used to have a local show way back in the day, and that got uh, the station kind of changed format, so they kind of got put on hiatus. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, I, I think I need them more than they need me. So I was like, I forced my way back in. No, nah, like, perfect. Yeah. It's awesome. But yeah. yeah. But if anybody's watching this, well, it's not going to air what you said until next, next uh, July 12th. I think it is. July 12th. Let's see where I'm at. July 12th. Maybe July 12th. We... I already got, I already have a pull down. Bars a little bit. Let's see. You're at Benny's on July 12th. Perfect. Benny's. Um, the next couple of places are a little bit farther, but then July 20th, Andy Gavin's 26th, the peanut bar, my new favorite spot. Um, Benny's again, beer boy is your spot. So definitely come check out some of these places. They're awesome. And you're booked through September. So lots of dates coming up. Hopefully you'll just, oh, yeah. the rest of the year, the last quarter, the fourth quarter. Yeah, dude, we're filling up. Fill I, out, I, went, yeah. I went crazy ham on it because I had nervous breakdown. Now we're almost done for the year. So All right, keep good. it going. <laughs> appreciate you so much riley thank you very much look forward to seeing you you again soon and uh i'm sure i'll see you in some format absolutely so all right thanks so much much. stick around for one minute after we hit pause sure you got it thanks we'll see you soon